Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of Metamorpho. Once again, Metamorpho is the Greek word for transformation, transform, or change, or transfiguration. It can be found in many places in the New Testament, but we have extrapolated it from Romans chapter 12, verse number two. That's Lady Andrews over there. She can't really talk right now. Hey. She's driving. And normally I would be driving, but I can't video and drive at the same time. Isn't that correct, Lady Andrews? I guess so. I guess so. You know what? We're going out into the public, into the street, and we're going to talk to some people. The last video was entitled, The Cost of Following Christ. Right, Lady Andrews? Correct. And was, was the same thing, Lady Andrews? Um, I'm driving two hands on the wheel. But yes, it was The Cost of Following Christ. And in that episode, we just share what are the challenges associated with being a follower of Jesus Christ. And uh, Lady Andrews was a little bit emotional. <laughs> a little bit. Lady Andrews told the whole story. And you know, there is a cost for following Christ. Uh, and it can be costly. It can be very costly. But the rewards are eternal, as we said in the video. But you know what? Today's video is not going to be about the cost. Today's video is the joys of following Christ. And the joys outweigh the cost. Oh my goodness. Stay tuned. Open your Bibles. And let's get into God's holy word. Amen, Lady Andrews. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us always. And we just want to encourage you to please share the video, to like it, and just to give us your feedback. It means a lot to us. And again, what we do is to glorify Christ, nothing else. So thank you so much. Join you. Okay. Stay tuned. We'll see you in a little bit. Thank you again for joining us. Um, we're here um, on location at Marita Square. And we're just looking for individuals just to share their own personal testimony about the joys of following Christ. So just sit back and just learn as we encounter different individuals, giving their input at what does it mean to have that joy with Christ. Thanks again. Okay, and today you're speaking to me, Shanna. How are you, Miss Shanna? Hi, how good, how are you? Just tell us a little bit about the joys of following Christ. Well, the biggest joy would have to be salvation. Um, Amen. Eternal salvation and getting yourself ready and your house ready for that. Um, my second would be peace. I have peace. Um, he takes away my troubles, Amen. points us in the right direction. Amen. Always provides peace and love. So. Um, there's just so many things, but those are the first, those are the most two important that That's come awesome. Mind. Thank you so much. Thank you. We really appreciate you. Thank you. God Amen. bless you. God bless you. Hey, my name is Christian, and I truly do enjoy following Christ because he has blessed me in so many ways. Just to meet this young, beautiful lady right here in so many ways, in so many parts of my life. And I truly am so faithful and so thankful for God. And I truly encourage you all to follow him and be with him. Awesome. Thank you so much. We really yes, appreciate sir. that. Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Okay. You want to tell us the joy of the flying right? Hi, my name is Taylor and I really believe in God and I thank myself for believing in God because God has brought me so far. I've been through so much stuff in my whole entire life and I feel like without believing in God, I wouldn't be where I was where I am today in life just wouldn't be as good as it is now. So. That is so awesome. You guys are beautiful couple. We wish y'all the best, okay? Thank, thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Man, that was awesome, wasn't it? It was awesome. Meeting wow. all those people and them just expressing and sharing their joys. That was very, very encouraging. Yes, so. yes. The, the Lord provided 
some people for us to interview. He did. And that was so beautiful, 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 beautiful. So we're talking about today the joys of following Christ. Yes. We talked about the cost and the cost is can be high and but the, the reward rewards are eternal. Uh, but today we're talking about the joys of Christ. And um, it was just so interesting how they were so freely willing to give themselves and just to share the goodness of God and the joys of the of Christ. Then Andrews, what are your thoughts today? Well, I just before going into the joys of following Christ, um, I would like you to just define the difference between joy and happiness. Because there is a distinction. Yes. Well, joy is a gift of God. Okay. Well, joy, as we're according to the scriptures, okay. God's joy um, is, a, is a gift from God. Happiness depends upon it's, uh, what happens, happenstance. Happiness, if something happens and you're happy, you're happy, you got a new car, you get something, whatever, something that makes you happy. But that is not the same as joy. So is it that it's temporary or circumstantial, depending on the circumstances? You'd be happy for a moment. Yes. But joy is long lasting regardless of what's going on. Yes. It's a deep, deep seated joy. Yes. Is that what Something saying? good happens, makes you happy. Well, joy is a state. It's not, it's, it's, a, it's a continual state of being and um, it's rooted in Christ. Okay. Okay. The joy is a father in Christ, it's the joy, the peace. And we're going to get through a whole lot, so much in scriptures, but joy itself is a gift from God. Okay, Happen, happiness is, like I said, if something good happens, okay. it makes you happy. Something bad happens, it makes you sad. But even in the midst of being sad, there's still joy. The Bible said, we've been made do it for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Okay. You know, so, any other thoughts? Yes, I was gonna do a um, quiz. Let's do it. Something impromptu. Let's go, Lady Andrews. All right. I have to get my timer. Get your timer. Are you ready? Like Freddy. So you always ask me, am I ready? Because I want to make sure that okay. you are ready. You got to use a timer? Yes. Ooh. So, honey, she... it's a timer and it's a test. Hey, we're not, we're supposed to be bringing the word. We ain't probably giving no test. Listen, Forrest, honey. Calm down, sweetie. Okay. I got you. Ready? I'm ready. Impromptu. I want you to tell me in one minute, uh -huh. what does the joy of the Lord mean to you? Begin. One minute. No, I can't do that right now. But then they're going to end up giving my whole message away. Okay, I have to stop. Honey, it... If I, if I tell them one minute what the joy of the Lord means, means it's over. this thing going to be over. No, it won't. You have scriptures to share with the individual. That's not fair. We went to the square uh -huh. and we interviewed people on the spot. They had to think about it. So you're the minister. Be prepared in season, out of season. Go. I'm always. Go. <laughs> go. go. The go. joy of the, the joy of the Father in Christ, I can't even put it in words. It's a joy I have eternal peace. I have hope. All of my confidence, my hope is in Christ. I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life forever, never to be blotted out. Um, I will, I will live all eternity with Jesus Christ, the Lord God. My sins are forgiven. I'm a new man. The old man is dead. He's buried with Christ. My sins are thrown in a sea of forgiveness and buried and never be, never to be remembered by God. I stand clean, justified, sanctified, cleansed, purified in the eyes of God. It's just so much. I fear no, have no fear of death because I know Jesus said, any man being in me, he should never see death. Okay, and it's not that you will live again, you never die, because you are in Christ. I have eternal life. The eternal life is in Christ. Big stop. Okay. It's one minute. Okay, pretty good. So that's it. We had people on the spot, and so it needed to be on the spot for you Thank you for well. tuning in to another exciting episode <laughs> of Metamorpho. <laughs> Oh my goodness. goodness. All right, go ahead with your scripture. Then at the end. No, no, no. You ain't getting off that easy, sister. You finna get your, your quick one I, minute. I wrote down mine already. Okay. Oh, I ain't write mine down. I know. Mine was off the rip. Honey, you're the minister. Okay, so you you're the minister too. You coach that book. <laughs> <laughs> coach the book, man. <laughs>
Awesome, Minister Andrews. That was great that you're able to share the joys of the top of your head like that. I am impressed. Okay, so what are the joys of following Christ? For me, the first one is having a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That's important to me. My second joy is just the joy of my salvation. Just knowing through Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, I know I'm able to spend eternity with Christ because he rose from the dead. That's a joy for me. Another one, it gives me great joy to know that I have God's Holy Spirit living within me. And as a result, God's Spirit is able to guide me, protect me, comfort me, lead me, just giving me insight on a daily basis so that I'm able to keep from the harms or keep from harm's way of the evil one. Another great joy for me, as I mature as a believer um, in Christ, I realize and see my desperate need for a savior. So it, gave me, it gives me great joy to know that I have a Lord who loves me unconditionally and he forgives me time and time again. And I'm given grace and mercy through Christ. As a healthcare worker, um, I am fortunate to meet different individuals. I've met individuals who are extremely sick, who can't walk, bedridden, wheelchair bound, just different, different um, scenario and um, stricken with different diseases. So for those who are believers, it gives me great joy to know that one day they will have a glorified body free from all illnesses, sickness and disease a day that we could look forward to where there'll be no more shedding of tears or just any of those challenges physically speaking that gives me great joy as i wrap up i just want to share that the joy of the lord is my strength there's also peace that i get that transcends all understanding um, because of christ i can now have a great marriage have a great relationship with my children and be blessed with all the fruits of the Spirit as it pertains to um, in Galatians chapter 5. And so there are just so many more, but those are some of the snippets or what brings me great joy. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy listening as we continue. Thank you. Okay, Minister Andrews, let's get into the Word. He's anxious to get into that Word. He loves the Bible. I love the word. Okay, it's the Bible. Oh my goodness, Lady Andrew, why we gotta be all this technical stuff? I love the word that's in the Bible. I don't love the Bible, this is just a book. I love the word that's in this book. <laughs> oh my goodness. But see, what, what? Oh my goodness. <laughs> all right, Lady Andrew, that was wonderful. So that, that is was great that a minute? joy. No, it was no minute. You was gave you, she gave me one minute to do all my and she took all the, all that time. I'm a woman. That's right. That's oh. right. You're a woman. Y'all speak twenty thousand words a day. And we will continue. And you do week. you do about eighteen thousand when you get home. Okay. That's well, all right. We will continue. Yes, yeah, and we, we we shall. Yes, we shall. Oh my goodness. So you know what? What we're we gonna do right now, if you will. Turning in your Bibles to John chapter 14. And we're going to go to the Lord Jesus Christ. His, uh, a lot of theologians, they call this the his farewell discourse. discourse. Okay. Farewell discourse is what they call it. But we're just saying, I'll see you later. Not no farewell. But uh, I'll see you in a minute. I'll see you in a couple of days, actually. Uh, John chapter 14, Lady Andrews. Let me know when you're there. Uh, yeah. And I got my Bible written down. I'm here, here on my Bible Gateway pages. That's where I like to get mine from. It's easier. Okay, I'm here. Okay, Lady Andrews. What you was? know what? Uh, John chapter 14 uh, is so awesome. The Word of God is, itself is awesome. Um, but I love John's Gospel. And John's Gospel chapter 14. Okay. Um, <clears throat> And it starts out in the Lord Jesus Christ saying, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. He makes a lot of promises to his disciples, his followers. 
And those also apply to us all who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm going to extrapolate a few verses out of this um, chapter, but I'm going to read it in its context. So, and for full context, um, contextual uh, 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 veracity, you need to read the whole chapter. All right, so let's look at, I'm going to go to um, number 20. And after the Lord had, as he had given all these different ifs, if you love me, uh, you should ask what you want, keep my commandments. So he comes down to verse number 20. Okay. And he says, at that day, you should know that I am in my father and ye in me and I in you. So it's, it's a nice uh, indwelling right there he's speaking of. He said, and at that day, you shall know that I am in my father, you in me and I in you. Amen. Number 21, he said, he didn't have my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. Now you can say what you want to say. A lot of people say, oh, I love the Lord. They're not trying to obey him. They're not trying to keep his word. They're not trying to live holy. And they're not, they just, just say, I just love the Lord. Okay. Uh, but he said, he that has my commandments. First, you got to have the commandments. You got to have the word. <laughs> it's in the word. You know what I mean? He said, he that had my commandment and keepeth them, mm -hmm. who obey them, he it is that loves me. Not by what you say, not Amen. what you think in your heart. It's about if you keep his commandments and love him, okay? And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. So just think, if I want to be loved of Jesus and loved of God, all I have to do is obey his word. Amen. And God will love me. He will love me. And that gives me joy. It's the joys of following Christ. Amen? Yes. So amen. Uh, so he that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my Father. Amen. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Awesome. Now when he says he's going to manifest himself to you, he's not saying he's going to pop up while you're in the shower. He's going to come sit on the edge of your bed. He's going to have a conversation pop up in your car. He's not saying he's going to manifest himself like that. Okay. Okay. When, when you call out to God, he's going to hear you. When you ask the Lord Jesus Christ to heal that sick child, or you ask the Lord mm -hmm. for favor, you ask him for peace, you ask him for something that you need a miracle that only God can give. Amen. He says that uh, I will manifest myself. When you're in trouble, when you're without, you're in need, I'm going to show up. And he has done it so many times over. I can't even remember. I can't even count the amount of times that the Lord Jesus Christ has manifested Himself Amen. in my life. I can't. I cannot. Uh, I can't even tell you so many testimonies that I can go on and tell you so many testimonies Amen. where the Lord Jesus Christ has manifested Himself. Okay. Now, in number twenty-two, Judas, not the one that betrayed him, not Iscariot. He said, Lord. How is it that you will manifest thyself unto us and not to the world? Verse 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, If, okay, and I always say it and I'll reiterate it again. If is only two letters. It's a very small word in the Bible. Okay, thank you, Lady Andrews. It's a very small word, but it's a very big and powerful word because it is contingent upon what you do. You have to do the ifs. If, 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 all right? If a man love me, he'll keep my words. <laughs> That's how you know you love Jesus. You say, oh, I love the Lord. Some of you, I love the Lord. They'll curse you out. They'll punch you in your face. They'll lie to you. They'll steal from you. Mm -hmm. uh, they hate you. They hate you because of the color of your skin or your size, your shape. They hate your hair color, whatever. And I'm not talking about race right now. I'm talking about people. Sinful people who lie and say that they love the Lord Jesus Christ. They'll tell you, I love the Lord, okay? But they are, they're, they're thieves, they're liars, a whole bunch of things. He said, if you love me, you will keep my, word. you will keep my words. <laughs> he said, and my father will love him. And he says, we, me, the father, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, we will come and make our abode with him. 
that gives me joy, Lady Amen. Andrews. Because he That's said, awesome. if I love him, I'm going to keep his word. I'm going to obey him. And he Amen. said, me and the Father, we're going to come and make our abode. We're going to live in this vessel. Live in this by First Corinthians chapter 6, uh, 19 to tell you that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And 319 will also tell you that you are the spirit. You are the temple of the living God. Okay? So going over to the next verse, number, number 24. He says, He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. Those who do not love the Lord, they don't obey him. They say they do. You know, he said, Why you call me Lord, 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 but you do not what I say? You call me Lord, 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 but you don't obey me. He said, For he that loveth me not, he don't keep my sayings. He said, and the word which you hear, they are not mine. My father's words. They Amen. are my father's word who sent me. Amen. Okay? He sent me. I'm his apostle. He sent me. Okay. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. You remember he was speaking to his disciples, okay, and his apostles. He said, But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Okay, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, number 27 is when icing on the cake. There's gonna be a whole lot of icing on the cake. Yes, Lady Andrew, you can make cake, right? Yes, I make, can make, make cake. cake. All right, yes, we're gonna put icing on the cake. A, a little icing on the cake. Number 27, he said, Peace I leave with you. That gives me joy. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ said, peace. He said, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm about to go away. I'm coming back, but I'm going to leave you with peace. Amen. That word peace in the Greek is irene. I love that word. In the Old Testament, they say shalom or shalom. And that's peace. But in the New Testament, it's irene. It's peace. Okay. He said, peace. I leave with you. And he goes a little bit further into it. He said, my peace I give unto you. <laughs> that give me joy. Not only do I have peace, and I have peace. Not only do I have peace in the peace, I have his peace. Amen. Okay? I have the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ through his spirit, the Holy Spirit. He said, I have I, I give unto you, not as the world giveth. The world has this peace and peace rallies and peace marches and stuff all kind of we're not talking about that kind of peace. Right. We're talking about a godly peace. Okay? He said, not as the world give, give out unto you. He said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So that's the kind of, the joy. These are things that the world, there's an old saying, it says, the joy that I have, right. the world exactly. can't take it away. The world didn't give it, yeah. and the world take can't it take it away. This is this kind of peace. So he gives us peace Amen. and joy. Then Andrew, you got any, anything you want to add or say right now? It's awesome. So that's a joy, just knowing that God is giving you his peace yes. as well as he's coming to make his abode with you. So it's a confidence you have. You don't have to worry. You don't have yes. to be wondering. If you're keeping his commandment, it's a promise that yes. he's making his abode with you. Um, he will manifest himself to you. So that was very rich. That whole section that you read, very rich. Um, peace, manifestation, Amen. Glory be to God. and um, love. Yes. Awesome. So let's go to uh, the next chapter right over. J John chapter 15 and in verse number 9. He says, as the Father have loved me. Now, now this is comparison, okay? He says, as the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Amen. Continue in my love. Number 10, here it comes again. It's the if. 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 Tell people, tell people if, Lady Andrews. If. If. Okay, because I said before and I said again, if is contingent upon what you do Amen. or what I do. You have to do the ifs. You want to test God, you want to test God's promises. Just do the ifs and improve God. He is not a man, he shall lie. Prove God, do the ifs. He said, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, 
even as I have kept my follow commandments. He said, and abide in his love. He said, you keep my commandments, you're going to live in my love. Amen. You're going to walk in my love. You're going to, it's going to awesome. just in, 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 uh, encapsulate you, you know. It's just going to uh, um, just fill you. The anointing will just, you live in the anointing. You walk in the anointing. You sleep in the anointing because you keep his commandments. You abide in my love. He said, even as I have kept my father's commandments Amen. and abide in his love, he lived, Jesus lived in the father's love. Yes, he and that's did. what we do. That gives me great joy, Lady Andrews. It is. It is. It's joy right. knowing that all I have to do is obey the Lord Jesus, obey his commandments, and I'll have the favor of God. His presence will live in me. Amen. That is so awesome. Uh, okay, and we're going to go over to uh, verse number 11. And you got some more of that what? Icing. Icing on the cake. Okay, this, I might not, I need to stop saying it because somebody might get hungry and make a cake one day. I don't know about saying they gain no weight because they're looking at metamorpho. Okay. Number 11. He said, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you. Now that is just amazing. He said, I'm telling you these things that my joy, Amen. not the world's joy, not some happiness, but he said, I'm telling you these things now that my joy might remain in you. It's going to remain when you're sick, when you're um, lonely, anything, when you're, when you're confused or whatever situation may be, you feeling isolated, you feeling whatever, or when you're on top, when you're on the bottom. He said, but my joy is always, it's going to remain. Okay. He said, and that your joy might be full. So he said, my joy and his joy. Amen. And I say, he, Jesus says, my joy. Okay. And that your joy might be full. Amen. We're, we're, if you're a child of God, you're a follower of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. You should exemplify joy. Not saying going all the way all the way around or happy all the time with a halo around here, but you should have joy. An inner joy. It's an inner joy yes. that no one can take. Amen. Circumstances can't take the joy awesome. of God. Lady Ann, did you got something else? No, I just think it's encouraging. As he says, my joy may be in you. And once his joy come, then that joy can be made full. So that's very encouraging. Thank you for sharing that. Amen. I like Amen. That. I like that. Well, that is so awesome, Lady Andrews. Yes. That is so awesome. You know what? We got some more icing. Yes, we do. Some more, all right. All right. No, I think I got something. Okay. All right, are we going? Okay. I think for me, I find a lot of joy in the Lord because I know that ultimately that's what matters in life and that even when a lot of things go wrong and random stuff happens in the world, it seems to mess things up. But that's not where I, I find my joy. I'm still able to be happy waking up knowing that Jesus Amen. is king and he reigns over all. Amen. <laughs> You got anything? Awesome. <laughs> I just think also like there's a lot of peace and I think peace also brings a lot of joy um, and it's with the Lord we have reassurance of like his kingdom coming and restoring the earth to the way it's meant to be his order. His Amen. Order, so. Awesome. That's beautiful. Thank you guys so much. Okay, Lady Andrews, we have some more icing. Okay. To put on that cake. I am ready. Lady Andrews, you're not drinking your water. I sipped it earlier. Thought you were gonna do like me. I ain't uh -huh. saying nothing. I know. It's all good. <laughs> they don't know what we're talking about. You gotta see the last video. You got now remember this video is a follow-up video to the last message that we did, and it was talking about the cost of following Christ. The cost. But now we're talking about the joys of following Christ. And we have to exemplify that joy. We did yes. a very good job with the cost of being doom and gloom. It was no doom and gloom, it's real. Well, it's a cost. It Did can be a cost. It can cost someone's life to follow Christ. Yes, but it, it can was... cause you to be ostracized. Yes, darling. It can cause a lot. But now we're talking about the joy. Oh, we have to exemplify that. You are exemplified. I am. Okay. Oh my goodness. First what you want me to tell five. some jokes? First John five. Oh my goodness. First John chapter five. Okay. And I say it again. If you want the veracity of uh, a continuity of the epistle read the entire epistle in its full context i'm extrapolating certain verses
but I am reading it in its proper context. Amen. Okay. First John chapter five. And I love first John chapter five. I'm going to start at verse number, I guess, number nine. I'll go ahead and start from number nine. He said, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness which God has testified of his son. And we, a lot of people, we, we receive the witness of men about a lot of different things. But he said, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. It's Amen. greater than the witness of man. He said, um, for uh, this is the witness of God, which he himself has testified of Yeshua, Christ, the Christ. Okay. He that believeth on the son of God has the witness in himself. That give me joy. He that believe or she who that believeth on the Son of God has the witness in himself. Mm -hmm. I have the witness in myself. Yes. I'm a witness. That's right. Yes. You're a witness. Yes, I am. A real witness. Okay? Mm -hmm. He that believeth not God has made him a liar. So you don't believe God, he'll tell you all about his son. He's giving you the word. He's giving you the gospel, which has been proven over and over through prophecy and a whole bunch of other um, non-scriptural texts. A lot of different things can be validated. But you know what? He said, he that believeth on the Son of God has the witness in himself. He that believeth not God has made him a liar. You balling up your fist or you grabbing whatever. You, you, you're just saying, I don't believe that. God, you are a liar. You're, you're calling God a liar to his face. And if you don't repent, you will stand before an angry God or you be judged. But right now, we're talking about the judge, right? Yes, we are. <laughs> that's speak. right. That's right. So he said, uh, you call him God a liar because you believe it's not the record that God gave of his son. You believe in Ellen G. White's witness, Sun Young Moon's witness, a Judge Rutherford's witness, uh, and so many other countless of other people's. You take their witness over the witness that God and the apostles have given us. So, but this is the witness which God has given about Yeshua. And this is the record that God has given unto us. Here's the record right here, folks. Eternal life. Amen. The record that God has given is eternal life. That gives me joy. That's awesome. That gives me joy, knowing that I will live for all eternity, Lady Andrews. Amen. Um, 100 million years from now, eternity will just have begun. It won't matter, okay? And this life is in His Son. Eternal life is not an occurrence, folks. Eternal life is not an event that happens. Eternal life is in a person. Amen. And that person is Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Eternal life is in Christ. Okay? Number 12. He that have the Son have life. It didn't say if you had the Son's mother, if you got some apostles, you got some angels, you got Buddha, you got Krishna, you got all these other false deities. Uh-uh. He said, he that have the, this is God's testimony. This is God's record. Yes. And he said, he that, or she that have the son, I had a son. You had a son. Yes. I and know. you have the son if you're a child of God. He that have the son have life. <laughs> and he that have not the son of God not have, life. have not life. If you do not have the Lord Jesus Christ, you are on your way to hell unless you repent come to the knowledge of christ be saved and you will have the opportunity today the bible says today is the day of salvation okay harden not your hearts the holy spirit is knocking the lord jesus christ is knocking on your door of your heart harden not your heart okay so he that have not the son of god i don't care if you call on different deities whoever if you do not have the lord jesus christ you do not have eternal life. You have no access to the kingdom of God. You have no um, access to the to the tree of life. You just don't have it. Okay. Number thirteen. Some more of that icing. Icing on the cake. These are the, the things, the joys of following Christ. Number thirteen. 
the Lord Jesus Christ said, and, and the Apostle John said this through the Holy Spirit, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. He said, those of you who believe on the name of the Amen. Son of God, I'm talking to you. If you do not believe on the Son of God, he's not talking to you. <laughs> he said, these things I have written to you that believe on the name of the Son of God, okay? And that you may know Amen. that you have eternal life, okay? That you may K-N-O-N W, okay. I spoke to someone recently, and they they're in Catholicism. They have no idea of knowing. You got to do so much. You got to take so many sacraments. You got to do so many uh, merits. Get so many deeds. You got to do so much. It's not about doing things, folks. It's about belief. It's about a uh, confession of faith, and it's by faith through grace that we're saved, not by any works that anyone can do. Okay. It is a gift of God. He said that you may have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Not his mother, not his apostles, no angels, no priests, no pope, none of that, none of that garbage. Okay? Believe on the name of the Son of God. Amen. Amen. They, these things give me joy, Lady Andrew. I see that. <laughs> give me joy. I had a witness in myself. Yes. I believe on the name of the Son of God. So these are some of the joys of following Christ. Awesome. Little Andrew, what you got? You like you got something. You like yeah, you got something. I you am just say. listening to you. Um, I'm no, not want to say. Again, okay. we're doing dealing with the joys of following Christ. Amen. And Amen. one of that joy is just having eternal life and knowing that you do have eternal life. So yes. Again, we just want to implore you to go back look at all the scriptures look at its context as minister andrew says and uh, make sure you read everything for yourself so that you could have your own um conviction and then also your confidence being in god and seeing what is it that he's bestowing to you as a believer and what is it that um can bring you a personal joy that the world can take away amen so. you got some more ice in it, andrew okay Got some more icing. Yes, you do. All right. My name is Crystal. And the question is, where are the joys of following Christ? Is yes, ma'am. Well, for me, one of the joys of following Christ is knowing that I am not in control and I do not have to worry about uh, what's going to happen because I know where my future holds. So Amen. I serve the king. He holds everything in his hands. And so I am covered at all times and in all ways. Amen. That's beautiful. Thanks. To God be the glory. Amen. You, sir? Oh, my name is Fred, and the joys of following Christ, it was it's a blessing that my grandparents and my parents uh, followed Christ. So we back in the day when you didn't have an option, we went to church four, five Amen. times a week, stayed there, choir, using the choir, using the church beautification pro project. Uh, uh, but the joys of following Christ was back then, I didn't know what the pleasures were going to be. But then you see all the unseen dangers that I've been protected for. I've been good health. I'm 60 years old. All my children are healthy. Amen. My Both my parents are still alive at 78 Amen. and 79. So those are the joys that I I appreciate now. I didn't then when we was in church all day and everybody else was running up and down the street and we had to do this. But as you know, the joys of Christ is to see the blessings of both parents, you know, all my Eight brothers and sisters are all still healthy and alive. Amen. My parents are still healthy and alive, you know, and, and those are just the blessings, the joys of, you know, and that's following, but I didn't even want to follow. So you still get blessed when I mean, you don't want to do it, just. Amen. Um, it is so awesome. Thank you all so much. Yeah, we, so we you really guys. appreciate that. No problem. Okay. You guys yes, put that on a website? Okay, then, Andrew, we got some more icing, some more icing. Okay, if, if you will, in your Bibles, turn to John chapter 17, okay? And this is what I really call the Lord's Prayer. A lot of people say that the Lord's Prayer is in Matthew 6 or Luke chapter 11. But you know what? The real Lord's Prayer, when he is praying, okay, in Matthew chapter 6 and Luke 11, that's when the disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Okay, he said, I'll teach you this. But in John uh, chapter 17 
this is the Lord's prayer himself. He's, he's about to be offered up. He's about to go to the cross and he's in the garden. He's praying. Uh, he's praying to his father. Okay, so I'm going to go uh, to verse number 13. I'm just going to extrapolate one verse out of that chapter. Okay, and number 13. After the Lord Jesus Christ has said, you know, my, I'm praying for my dis the disciples. They're mine. They're yours. He said, restore me with the glory that I had before the world was. He said, I'm yours, you and me, and no one has been lost except for Judas, the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now he come to verse number 13, okay? And he says, and now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. So he said, all these things I say, all these things I've done, he said, and now, Father, he said, come to his Holy Father. He said, I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves, the joys of Christ, not of the world, not of the stock market or any other things, but the, the joy of Christ himself. Okay, if you will, turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 10. I love Luke's uh, gospel, and chapter 10 is, is so powerful. But listen to what he says right here. First of all, let me just tell you, the Lord Jesus Christ has sent 72 out, okay? He sent them two by two to proclaim the gospel, to go you know, do the works of the Lord, just to teach. And, and to do the gospel. Well, now, in verse number 17, listen at this very well. He says, and the 70 returned again with joy. They returned again with joy. They were pumped up. They were ecstatic, okay? Um, and it says, Lord, even the devils are subject to us in your name. Jesus knew this already. But he's saying even the devils and the devils are still subject to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you use it with belief, with faith and power. Okay. He said even the devils are subject to us through your name. Okay. Number 18. He said unto them, Jesus, I was there in the beginning. And I saw all of this stuff. He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Okay from heaven. He said, I, I was there. And you can read about that also um, in Revelation chapter 12. I'll tell you about that too. But he says, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. Okay. And number 19 is so, so powerful for the life of a Christian, of a believer. And it gives me so much joy as well. He says, behold, I give unto you power. Okay. That's dunamis. I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over the, all the power of the enemy, okay? And he says, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He says, I give you this kind of power. Now, listen to what the Lord Jesus Christ says, okay? He said, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. Yeah, the spirits are subject to us and through Jesus Christ's name, but that's not what we're rejoicing about. That's not what gives us joy. He says this right here, but rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That's what we're rejoicing about. That gives us joy. These are the joys of following Christ. Not only do we have power over devils and demons and all this kind of stuff, that's great, but our names are written in heaven. <laughs> These are the joys of following Christ. Okay, Lady Andrews, we got some more icing. For okay. the cake. Awesome. If you will turn to Galatians chapter 5. Oh, we're talking again about the joys of following Christ. We have to exemplify that, my love. Do you do it? Are you, why do you keep doing that? <laughs> why do you, why do you, wait, wait, am I not acting like I'm joyous? No. Yes, I am. Okay. My goodness. Okay. Hi, right, friend. Is that better? Galatians chapter 5. What verse? <laughs> My goodness. Oh. Okay. What do you want me to do? Go ahead. You don't think I have joy? I mean, you're rough, but go ahead. I can't help that. You like it? 
keep breathing. Okay, yeah. Galatians chapter 5. Okay, we're gonna put some more icing on that cake. Yes, darling. Now, Galatians chapter 5 is just, you know, a contrast between the law and the spirit. We're not talking about that per se, okay? But we're gonna talk about the fruit. And the fruit of the spirit is what you get when the Holy Spirit is in you. Amen. Okay, when you believe in Christ, you accept Him. Holy Spirit comes and, and just, dwelling. yeah, He's dwelling inside of you. But, Okay, number 19 said now he said now the work of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery. If you're in adultery, God is going to judge you. Okay? Fornication. Are you having sex? You're not married, you're doing uh pornography, you're doing different things. Okay, that's 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 fornication. And God will judge you for these things. Uncleanness, lasciviousness, this wild righteous living, you know, or idolatry. So much idolatry people make it idols into uh, their gods, their cars, their jobs. People make even other people. These popes and ministers, different people, they make them into idols. Okay? God will judge you for that. Witchcraft, rebellion, oh my goodness, so much. Hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, just angry all the time. You want to hurt somebody just, or you just have hate balled up into, that's wrath. Okay? Strife, causing divisions, God hates this kind of stuff, folks. And seditions and heresies, so much envy, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such the like of these which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You will not. You have no access to the kingdom of God. You will be judged. So you have to repent for those things. Come to Christ. Now, it's more that icing. Yes. Right? You're going to put icing on that cake. Later, Andrew, you don't think I have joy tonight. You, do you think I not have joy? Don't I show joy all the time? I'm sorry? Don't, do I not show joy? <laughs> all the time we're on the video or what? Oh, let, let, let it go, let Andrews. I'm trying to figure out. Did it be? <laughs> <laughs> y'all, I said, bzzz. Y'all know about that. Let's y'all see in the movie. Chris Tucker, bzzz. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Word. Anyway, okay. Number twenty. Stop it, little Andrew. We do the gospel. Okay. Number twenty-two. He says, "But the fruit of the spirit." This is the proof is in the pudding. Jesus said, um, "In oh, Matthew twelve, anyway, he said, uh, but the fruit, a tree. You can tell the tree okay, by the fruit that it produce.' Okay. Okay. Now, if I say, I say, I'm an apple tree." The only thing you see is uh, peaches, then I'm a peach tree. Right. You can say what you want to say. Okay? But the fruit of the Spirit is Amen. love. These are things, these are the joys of following Christ. Yes. Okay? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Oh my Amen. goodness. Long suffering, gentleness. Let Andrew, I'm gentle. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Goodness. Faith. Yes. Meekness. Yes. Oh my goodness. Temperance against such there's no law. Okay. These are the joys of following Christ. Of following Christ. Yes. All these, the fruit of the Spirit, That's all these, beautiful. these are the joys of following Christ. Okay. Romans chapter 14. Verse number 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not in meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Romans 15, 13 says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Awesome. Did you, did you get that? Yes. Oh, my goodness so he's given all this to you this awesome. he's given us all of this I know. just this yes, for him coming and and i'm gonna close this this um let, i have one more two more psalm 16 psalm division 16 okay. verse 11 that would show me the path of life i like that so he's he gonna show you the path yeah. of life in thy presence is the fullness of joy in thy presence in your presence, 
when people come in your presence because Amen. the Holy Spirit resides in you, Amen. they should be they should experience some joy. Amen. Okay, he said, "In thy presence awesome. is the fullness of joy, and at thy right hand there are pleasures evermore." Lady Andrews, can you do? Can you read something for me real quick in your Bible? Okay. First Corinthians. Go to First Corinthians chapter two. First Corinthians chapter two. Awesome teaching, honey. That's Praise wonderful. the Lord. Glory be to God. We're gonna wrap this thing up right now, but you know what? The last video that we did entitled. The, the cost of following Christ. Yes. He got so many thank you. So many. If you just look at that feed, Lady Andrew, so many people saying thank you, thank you. And it's amazing. And a lot of people said we need more of that. We need to hear this right here. And glory be to God for that. But that video, it touched a lot of people. Um, and you felt the video was kind of, um, I don't know, you felt some kind of way about that video. I mean, just doom and gloom. It was just a cost and just the, the heaviness. It's, it's a I think you mentioned that it can be a burden. It can, it, you know, Jesus said, he said, my burdens are light. You know, can't, you know, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. But the cost of following him, it can be costly. Okay. And it costs a lot of people. Um, one Christian dies uh, every, every six, six minutes, six minutes for, the, sure. for the name of Jesus yes. Christ. So it, it can cost one's life at any given time. Okay, not a burden. It just can be heavy. It can be. Although the Lord said to, to his yoke um, is light. And right. But uh -huh. I'm just saying, if, and if you stay in the flesh, you could just have that heaviness. But it's just turning over everything to God. Yes. It's Christ. not an easy walk. It's not an easy, easy walk. People, oh, I'm a Christian. I still smoke dope, get high. I got a girlfriend outside of my marriage, but I'm still saved. No, you're not. I mean, and just if you want to do things God's way and follow. Follow Look. his way. It's an it's a narrow road. Yes. The scripture says yes. that. Yes. So it's just feeling that um feeling that um cost, if you will. Yes. Well I won't say that they're not, but they're living in sin. Okay. Holy Spirit is in the Bible says you cannot live in sin. Habitually you cannot practice sin, you cannot be a, a habitual sinner and say you're a follower of Jesus Christ. Okay. Somebody's lying either fruit, someone lying somewhere. So this video is a joy. We talked about Come the, the joy. Yes. We're being joyful. Yes. Still got to tell the truth, Lady Andrew. Yes, honey. I can tell the truth and still have joy. That's one good thing about joy. It's not based on circumstances. It's not based. Joy is, is eternal to give. Yes, Come is. on, Lady Andrew. I'm waiting on you. You told me first Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter two. Okay. First number nine. Listen at this really good, people. Okay. Take your time with Lady Andrew. I shall, Minister Andrews. Okay. Are you ready, Minister Andrews? I stay ready. Okay. I was born Andrews. ready. Ready? Okay. But just as it is written, things which eye has not seen, yes, and ear has not heard, yes, and which have not entered the heart of men, yes, all that God has prepared for those who love Him. Amen. The prophet Isaiah wrote about that in Isaiah chapter sixty-four. So that's why I said, as it has written. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. It, we can't fathom, we cannot imagine. Amen. Hollywood and all of its creativity, Steven Spielberg and all these other directors, these movie producers, they can't recreate heaven. They, can't, they can only go by the limited flesh, human mind. It's, it's a supernatural thing. Eyes have not seen it, ears have not heard it, no. nor has it ever entered into the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for them that love him. Amen. Remember what Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's John, John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. So the things that God has prepared for us, I want to see those things, Lady yes, Andrews. That's beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. And I, I want to see it. And even for joy, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was on that cross, he looked beyond the cross for the joy so that was fun. set before him. It's joy. Oh, my goodness. Wonderful. Amen. So, to God be the glory. Yes. Lady Andrews, what do you always say at the end of the videos? Something about the last thing. Uh, you say something... The, the main thing is something. Well, that's what you said. The main thing is the main thing. 
but we're we're one so that's fine i'll take credit for it but no, yes i said it now talking about that <laughs> yeah we are you're right i'm just having fun i have joy lady andrews i have joy oh my husband gotta yes. love the kid yeah. but anyway you want some more sugar on to the cancer i see it come on come on you come want on. to give me i sugar, always want to give you some mm, i always want to give you some sugar I'm gonna give you some more sugar and turn the camera up. Okay, like we said, the main thing is the main thing. You must be born again, okay? And, and without being born again, you have no access to God. You have no access to the tree of life. You have no access to the Holy Spirit and the kingdom of God, the tree of life. Your name will not be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Okay, so you must, Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. So, if you will, turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 10, and I'm going to read from verses 9 and 10. It said that, that, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Okay, he said, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness with the heart and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation okay so if you will confess the Lord Jesus Christ just pray with me say Heavenly Father I confess the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord right now I repent of my sins I believe that Jesus is the Son of God Yeshua I believe that you died for my sins I own that cross and I believe that you are risen from the dead by the glory of God. I believe it. Okay, friends, and, and, uh, forgive me for my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name. If you have prayed that prayer, you have to believe it in your heart. Anything that I can convince you of, someone else convince you out of. Okay, this has to be done by faith. Nothing that I can say. You have to believe that he is. You have to believe the word of God. You know what? I'm done. We're done. Believe in Jesus Christ. He will give you this supernatural joy, the peace, the love, the grace. It's so much abundance of joy. He said, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. You will, he will give you this abundant life. You know what? <laughs> Thank you so much. That was a great lesson. Thank you Thank so you. much. Praise I learned Lord. a lot. And um, I Glory appreciate all the things that you have shared. Amen. I appreciate you as a minister. I appreciate you, all the hard work and the studying that you do. So, Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. I appreciate your studying too. And we appreciate you guys studying and following us and reading the Word of God. Amen. And thanks again for tuning into another exciting episode of Metamorpho. Again, this episode was the joys of following Christ. The joys. You know what? And if you have accepted Christ Amen. and you need to be baptized, if you are in our local area, contact us. We will baptize you. Yes, COVID-19, we have procedures. We can still do it. I can Amen. put on my rubber suit. And we can do it and go under the water in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. If you need prayer, let us know. We fast and we pray. Okay? And God delivers. He delivers. Yes, he answers he our prayers. He hears us when we pray. And he's just faithful. Yes, he is. We thank you so much for tuning into a, another exciting episode of Metamorpho. There you go. When you said exciting, you smile. That's awesome. I love that. Oh. Also, we want you to like the video, yes. love it, yes. share it, of course, yes. and then just comment. Let's drop us a line, and um, we're grateful and thankful for all those who have um, interacted with us on just sharing how yes. much they're learning. Um, Amen. We love you all. We pray for everyone, and we just yes. want um, God to be glorified through what we're doing. So thank Amen. you so much. And stay safe. Yes. Okay, you want some more smiling. sugar, don't you? Always. Yeah. Sugar, sugar. Come on over here. Come on. Yeah. You're a nice teddy bear. Ain't no teddy bear. So, you're nice. No, I ain't no teddy bear. Don't tell nobody that. You're nice. Okay, I'm nice. I'm not even nice. You are. Baby, come on. <laughs> Don't tell nobody I'm nice. I do nice things. We tried to be all rough. Watch out.
<laughs> Let me cut the computer off. <laughs> what are you playing? He's really nice. I'm not nice. I'm not nice. I'm not no nice guy. I gotta you go. You are, you are. Watch out. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the things of the Lord. It don't say no way about be nice. 